the last lectures, you know, for section 9.2 of the chapter, have looked at physical means, heat, radiation, filtration. Now let's talk chemicals. So section 9.3, we're going to be looking at the different chemicals that allow us to control, allow us to sterilize, to decontaminate, you know, antiseptics. One of the things you have to take into account when you're developing a new treatment or you're trying to determine which chemical agent, well, is it an aqueous solution or is it what's referred to as a tincture? Aqueous solution means it's water-based. Tincture means that whatever chemical compound that you want has been dissolved in an alcohol solution. That's what a tincture is. So when you're trying to figure out which chemical to use, again, you have some different things to take into mind, different factors that you have things you have to factor in to this decision. You know, how quickly or how slowly is this is going to work at low concentrations? That's the first thing. As we saw with heat, you know, higher the heat, the lower the time, but the all, you know, the higher the heat, the more risk of damage, thermal damage, melting, warping. Turns out here with chemicals, well, higher the concentration of the compound, whether it's an aqueous solution or a tincture, also means that it can become more toxic to whoever gets exposed to it. So again, high concentrations work and low time, but if any of residues is still there or anyone's in the vicinity wants being used, they could be hurt. Lower the concentration so it's not quite so damaging to us as we're using it means you have to increase the time, means you spray, and then you have to let it set for a while before you come and wipe it up. Solubility, well, water, alcohol. Which one is it going to be soluble in? Some compounds that would work great on paper, not soluble in either one. Can't use them. And then is it broad spectrum, but not toxic? Broad spectrum means that it will work great against a host of different bacterial species as well as maybe, hey, some fungi or most fungi or some protozoan and things like that. Broad. Narrow spectrum, it's only good for one type of species or one type of cell. The broader the spectrum, the greater the chance that it's going to be toxic to us. Because if it can damage different, more types of microbes, prokaryotic, eukaryotic, means it also has a chance of being damaging to our human cells. And then penetration. If you're using a liquid, is it going to penetrate the surface? Is it going to get down into the surface? And even though you go, you wipe it up or you think it's dried, it's still there because most surfaces you look at, they may look solid, but they can be very porous at the microscopic level. Is it going to stay there? Is it going to get into the plastic? You know, is it going to you know, interact with the plastic at the molecular level? Residues stay there. Um, then, you know, inactivation. Turns out like, you know, you heat something up or it inter interacts with other chemicals, other compounds that may be present. Is it going to be inactive, inactivated? To inactivate something, all you have to do is give it a little, you know, the compound, a little twist, a little tweak. Maybe, you know, cut part of it off, pull part of it off, or, you know, bond it to another molecule. And then, lo and behold, you no longer have something that works. So we find this with chemical disinfectants when there's lots of material there. You know, um, in a restaurant setting, you know, if there's lots, uh, you know, on cutting boards, if there's lots of food particles on there and you're sitting there spraying it down with a disinfectant solution, 
well, the disinfectant solution is not going to be interacting with the cutting board plastic. It's going to be interacting with the pieces of the vegetable matter, the pieces of the meat matter that were stuck there so that when you go and you wipe, well, none of the chemical actually got onto the board because it's stuck to everything else. And then also, how corrosive or how staining can stuff be? Is it going to penetrate? Is it going to alter the surface of whatever it is you're working on or whatever it is you're trying to disinfect, whatever it is you're trying to sterilize? You know, great, it's perfect at sterilizing, but every time you use it, you change the surface properties of whatever it is. Mm whatever you're trying to disinfect or you're trying to sterilize. That's not good. And then, is it affordable? Is it available? There's going to be great sterilizing agents you can use. There's going to be great disinfecting agents you can use that are near perfect, but they're expensive. You're only going to want to use them in certain places at certain times. The chemicals and stuff they would use to clean, disinfect, and sterilize a surgical room in a hospital is not going to be the stuff, the same stuff they're going to use, spend the money on to disinfect a waiting room. These are things you have to take into consideration. <laughs>